What random fact can you tell me that's going to end up on Wikipedia after this? I am joined by Mr. John Myung from Dream Theatre. Yeah. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you. Good. My mission is to make you laugh on this podcast. I want to see a big belly laugh from John Myung. If that <laughs> happens, it's already happening. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming on the Heavy Hook Show. Um, I've interviewed the rest of your band, so I needed to get you on as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, firstly, congratulations on your Grammy. I mean, that is sensational. How did that feel when you won that? It felt amazing. Wasn't expected, but um, but it happened. So uh, it's definitely uh, something that we appreciate. Um, just one more thing to add to our uh, list of accomplishments. So um, sure. yeah, we're very grateful to have received that honor. Did you think you were going to get that when it was when it was you know when it was all happening when it was kicking off you know because I, I know that you guys weren't there and only John Petrucci was there. Um, when he obviously let you know, you, you must, I bet you were astounded. Right. Well, you don't, you don't really ever know. You just kind of see what happens. Right. Yeah. And and it happened. Yeah. So that was, uh, it was amazing. Amazing. I was wondering, obviously we, well, we've, we've met a couple of times backstage at concerts, but I'm not expecting you to remember that, but I was wondering if I could break the ice with you um, by playing a game called this or that, where basically, John, I just ask you which of the two things you prefer, you have to choose why, and you don't, oh, sorry, you have to pick one and you don't have to explain uh, why, if you'd be happy to play. Sure. <laughs> I don't want to play. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. Illumination theory or Count of Tuscany? Illumination theory. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Constant motion or As I Am? As I Am. Okay, nice. Breaking all, uh, breaking all illusions or transcending time? Breaking all illusions. Okay. Dance of Eternity or Stream of Consciousness? Um, you said dance of eternity, right? Dance of eternity or stream of consciousness? Yeah. Uh, dance of eternity. Okay. And the last one, and I've asked every other band member of yours this question, so it feels right to ask you as well: Schmedley Wilcox or Instrumedley? Schmedley Wilcox or really? Instrumedley? Yeah, Instrumedley. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing piece of work. Um, John, you're famously mysterious. And I think out of the whole band, when people are learning about Dream Theatre and they're learning about the band members, there is kind of least known about you. What could you tell me about yourself that would be something that would maybe surprise your fans or surprise me. For example, I don't know, you might be a massive Elton John fan or your your, your favourite food might be a cheeseburger or something. What what random fact can you tell me that's going to end up on Wikipedia after this? Well, I just like, um, I don't know, I just like sort of keep it to myself and not really... Uh, unless I'm asked to do something specifically, okay. Uh, I just find it to be more of uh, it's my preferred creative state, kind of. Of course. Uh, kind of step outside of the busyness of of, uh, of mm. the whole attention side of the uh, aspect of what we do. Okay. It, it's a more it's a more comfortable state for me to be in. Of course. I guess it's it's almost it's it's almost kind of you really have got two sides of the coin with you because on one hand you're playing in front of thousands of people every night and on the other hand you know you are famously private I guess and I I, I can imagine that's actually quite therapeutic to be that way. Um. <clears throat> yeah. Well, it takes a little bit of everything to keep going, so uh, I just try to you know balance things the best I can. Mm. 
You've you've been on a right record tour process for nearly 40 years, John. I didn't want to make it. I wasn't insinuating you were older than I was just saying you've been on this process for a really long time. What do you, do you feel as musically inspired as you did back in 1985 when Dream Theater was born? Or do you have to constantly find new ways to, you know, inspire yourself creative creatively? I think we're always kind of driven to do what we do. Um, and there's the opportunity to always kind of do things a little better because you just have learned what works and what doesn't mm -hmm. um, along the way. And, and that's that's how you progress, right? You, mm -hmm. you learn through uh, going through the ups and downs of, of uh, what it is that you do. Um, and it's a down periods and mistakes and things like that where, where you learn the most. If you were to constantly always do the right thing, it's questionable if you really learn anything because then you know yes. to write about, well, this is what I did and it worked out, but life isn't that way. No. So, um, so, you know, it's been, it's been a journey, a challenging journey and it's still going. Your, your band members have got, different uh, projects outside of dream theater you know john and jordan have got their solo stuff and of course you know liquid tension uh mike mangini teaches on zoom um james uh, last year released his his newest solo album are we ever going to get anything a solo project from john myung or does the dream theater train carry everything that you need it to creatively well i think I focus mainly on dream theater, but but I have done things with uh, with Rod Morgan, Cena, and Ty Taper. Um, it's a a musical uh, entity that we we've, we've done like a uh, few records. It's called the Jelly Jam. Yes, yeah. And, and, and the latest release was uh, the Prophet that we did um a while back. Yeah. Um, which came out really really good i thought mm -hmm. um but 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 apart from that um you know between family life and and just mm. the demands of being in the band i just I'm, I'm happy kind of just staying focused right now on um on just the band and, and just mm -hmm. kind of staying fit and 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 growing and trying to contribute the, the most i can to what we do and you 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 do kind of dip in and out talking about con contributing towards the band you you dip in and out with regards to songwriting is that something you would like to become you know more not necessarily involved but is that something you'd like to do more john or is you know do you do you like that you have the freedom to kind of dip in and out when you are feeling sort of creatively inspired to approach you know a song to to put on an album that you've written, written yourself well i think <clears throat> that's sort of the best way to to go about it, mm. you know. Um, if I don't think I have anything to really contribute, I think it's best if someone else comes in and fills that spot. Of course, um, yeah. But but when it does come around again, and I feel strongly about something, that um, for sure, yeah, I'm glad to kind of bring it forward and, and to, to make it happen. We, we've we discussed the longevity of your career and it's amazing. You've done so, so much. What would you say in the 40 years, John, that you've been doing this, what has been the biggest spinal tap moment of your life in dream theater? Spinal tap moment. Oh, I don't know. There's there's been uh, a few awkward moments. Um, I don't know. It could be anywhere from there being too much smoke on the stage. <laughs> That's to, that actually uh, happens. To uh, you know, just you know, thinking that you're really really prepared, and then you right. realize you get up on stage and. I don't know. Maybe it's a start of a tour, and you feel like you haven't really put in enough prep time to feel 
totally in tune with with the set yeah yeah um it, it's more along more along those lines okay i think it's fair to say i speak on behalf of all dream theater fans and john my young fans when i say this john we want more bass solos when are the bass solos coming? We need more tapping. We need more solos. We need more of it. Um, is there going to be any of that in your next album? Please say yes. Well, you brought it to my attention, so we'll see yes! what happens. <laughs> do you? Do you? I mean, you're you're. I know that you're naturally private, and I'm I'm so grateful for you coming on and doing this with me. When you kind of do take center stage you know through some of the some of the tracks when you do have to kind of get in front of you know as i say take center stage to 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 create those moments do you do you enjoy that does that come naturally to you or do you kind of just do it because that was how the song was written do you you know are there those moments when you really enjoy kind of taking the center stage <clears throat> i mean i i enjoy it from from the challenge that it presents yeah because uh it's really different. Um, it's a, it's a really different state of mind, different state of playing when when you're playing in front of people up on stage. It's much different than practicing at home. Yes, you know, um, it, it's it's really different. I can't explain it. You're just playing harder. Mm. You know, you're um, in front of people. You're you're taking in all the energy in the room mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> it's really just the kind of, uh, it's a really unique experience where we're just kind of experiencing something sonically together in a big room, the powerful PA mm. and, um, and it feels great. I bet. You know, I really enjoy it. I bet. Um, yeah, I think I think when I talk about your bass solos, I think the 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 one that kind of comes to my mind is is of course like you know Metropolis like da 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 da. It's just it's when I watch that I'm you know I I just don't know how you do it. It's just crazy. You you are always seen to be practicing. You know whenever there's videos going on social media or whenever you know there's been kind of documentaries about the band, you're you're always to yourself with your headphones on practicing away. How many hours a day? Are you practicing? Well, it's actually a tour where I practice the most. Okay. Um, so um, I think probably um, because that's when we're working, right? Um, okay. And, and it's, you know what, what when I'm at home, I, I don't really play as much. Um, so I think when we are touring and stuff, it's sort of like, well, I'm not here to work. So some kind of just applying myself, you know, in, in that environment. So that's probably why it comes across that way. Okay. Okay. That's really interesting. Um, tell me a random item that you have on your rider that you cannot live without. Random item. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, Mariah um, Carey has her doves and Beyonce has silver straws. I'm I'm expecting the same level from John Mayung. <laughs> um, you know what? I the recent thing I've been adding is uh, is manuka honey. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've been uh, having that um, as part of my uh, as my breakfast <laughs> every morning. Okay. Um. And uh, I don't know. Apart from that, you know, <laughs> there's a bunch of other things. But if there was one thing, I would say that that's quite cool. That's interesting. Um, what I mean, Dream Theater. The foundation of Dream Theater is it's progressive rock, and it's extremely challenging and technical for you guys to play. And I think Dream Theater really is kind of a musician's band. What for you? you know, since the beginning of your career with them, what has been the most demanding song that you've really had to knuckle down, learn and, and make sure that you get it right live? Um, the role. I mean, there's certain songs that are physically um, sort of demanding. Okay. <clears throat> 
like uh like glass prison oh yeah sure um i mean there's certain songs that have sections that are very stamina driven mm -hmm. yes or whether it be like repetitive pattern um but then you have other things that are very um orchestrated um and the root notes are constantly changing so those are challenging um more of in like a mental sense where it's sort of like all right well where is this going and you, mm. of course you're up on stage and things kind of sound out of tune and you don't really know if you're playing in tune but you know <laughs> you are so you know there, there's, there's a lot of this you know there's a lot of um a lot of things that can interfere with your perception when you're up on stage okay that's um, interesting so you know it doesn't for me each song is challenging because you have to remember it and you have to uh uh play it right from you know you don't get mm. two tries right you get one try so it's all really challenging yeah i i, I think from a fan point of view uh, personally I, I always i don't like it when people make mistakes you know that's not what i'm saying but i think it, it shows a level of you know, you, you guys are human, you know, you're not actually, you know, gods. Um, but I think when you, when you get like, you know, a, a, a wrong note sort of here or there, I kind of think it just adds to the organicness of, of the live performance, but also your career has been built on making some of the most complicated music ever. So I guess you can't like fuck up too much. Right. Right. I mean, it's interesting when, um, <clears throat> when forever, you know, for whatever reason, um, one particular song might be off that night. Mm -hmm. But um, but as long as we can fix it midstream and pull back together, yeah, that that to me is the uh, is the interesting part, and and that's sort of more of what it's about for me. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, yeah, like you said, we're human. Um, things will happen, but but as long as you're able to pull it together before the song ends, then, mm. um, then, then it's great. Amazing. Um, the, the industry has changed so much since you guys started. Um, you know, when you guys started, you were probably part of the tape trading scene, you know, and, and everything was kind of, you know, on, on that level, you had to actually go and buy your music as opposed to stream it. Do you think that the introduction of streaming services like Spotify, Apple and everywhere else, do you think that's been positive for not just a, a, an iconic band like yourself, but also aspiring artists? Well, I, I think that's one of those things that reverts back to, um, you know, what, what your perception of it is, you know, where... yes everything sort of comes in pairs, you know, something that could initially be perceived as bad, you know, depending on your point of view could actually be good mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's sort of taking the good with the bad and trying to find the balance because, um, you know, that's a challenge. I mean, things are constantly changing due to technology, mm -hmm. the way people acquire music, the way people share music, the yes. way people find out about music, that's always changing. So the dynamics of how people discover music will change. Mm. And, um, you know, you kind of just have to really roll with it, right? And kind of accept yeah. it and, uh, you know, just try to cover as much ground as you can. Mm. What, as, as, as an artist that has won a Grammy, what would your advice be to a band or an artist that cited you as one of their biggest influences. They wanted to climb the same ladder as you. They wanted to win the Grammy. They wanted to play these iconic venues across the world. What would your advice be for an aspiring artist there, John? Well, <clears throat> to be open-minded um, mm. and to just focus on, you know, the, the longevity part, just kind okay. of, you know, making sure you're uh, putting the time in, but balancing, you know, balance, balancing things out in a certain way so you don't burn out. 
Okay. Um, and kind of just setting it up for the for the long haul, really, you know, because um, you, you don't know when success might hit or what mm-hmm. level of success might hit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for us, we've been fortunate to have a very career based um, mm-hmm. ca- career based experience. Um where we have fans all over the world and we get to tour and mm. perform in front of all these people. And, um, and that's something that took, you know, decades to build, Yes, you know, and, and, and it's still building. Uh, we've been, <clears throat> even from the top of the world came out in October, 21 and started touring in 22. Yeah. And we just finished up uh, in Asia uh, yes. a few weeks ago. And now we're taking a break um, and then we're going back out this summer and we've decided to uh, interact with a couple of other bands. Okay. Uh, Devin Townsend. Yep. And Animals as Leaders. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And, um, yeah, so it, it was a fun way to kind of break things up this summer. Mm. Well, it's, you know, right, rather than sitting the summer out, you know, we're, we're out there being active, but we're um, collaborating yeah, uh, with a few other bands, um, and it should be great. I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, taking it all in. What is next for you guys? We've mentioned, you know, on several occasions uh, throughout the interview that you know you you've won the Grammy. You you play in front of thousands of people. You tour the world constantly. You know, you are such a successful business. But where does this go next? Where's it going next? <laughs> it's going to keep going. You know, <laughs> okay. hopefully, it keeps, hopefully, it keeps going, right? Uh, of course, I want it to. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, we're very grateful for the level of success, success that we have, for of sure. Course. Yeah, but there's always room to be bigger than what, than than what we, you know. There's certainly room for upward potential for us. <laughs> You know, so um where do you how do you so, get up from a Grammy? How do you do that? <laughs> um get another one. <laughs> uh you know, well, you know, it's we're not setting, you know, any we're not we're not gonna say, okay, we've done it all, you know, because uh you know, our mindset is to just, you know, to keep it going for as long as we can. I really hope you do because you are a band that is so special to me and so close to my heart. I I never want to open the news one day and see that you guys have decided to call it a day. I, I want you to go, uh, just want you to carry on going. Just don't ever stop because what you do is amazing. It's inspiring. And, um, you know, we just absolutely love your music. Um, we, we mentioned the fact during the interview, John, that you are quite, you know, your, your your preferred sort of mindset is to be you know quite private and you know and that that obviously is, works for you and that's amazing but i need to ask you a question about social media is the instagram account john my young images is that you or is that a fan it's not me oh, it's a fa- i thought it was you <laughs> no i genuinely no. thought it was you no i don't do i've kind of uh i don't do any of that how come if, 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 it, if it does if it does exist there's other things i'd rather be concerned with yeah and yeah. there's other things that i'd be doing uh, yeah to be honest um mm. you know uh i just don't feel right yeah when when i go down that path it does it doesn't feel good to me no no, I get that. I get that. Um, I, I made sort of a comment earlier trying to get out of you what the next album would entail. But have you actually started work on your next release? No, we haven't. Okay. I think, um, you know, right now our big, uh, big thing is to get Dream Sonic off the ground. Of course. You know, we're starting up uh, the 16th of June, I believe, in uh, Cedar Rapids, Texas. Amazing. Uh, and then we're moving on to Florida. And um, so we'll be in North America for about six weeks. Uh, 
you know, playing playing the states and going up in Canada mm. as well. So they'll they'll bring us, uh, you know, to the end of July, and then we'll break a bit for the summer, and then uh, and then start thinking about working on a new album eventually. You must be exhausted. You must be. You must be exhausted, John. Do, are you are you exhausted um, or are you inspired? Like I'm. I'm just trying to think because. I'm just trying to picture from from my point of view. I see you guys like live, every, like either every year or every other year. I get you know see your new albums come out, and I'm like, yeah, this is great. But behind the scenes, there's so much work you're putting in. The, those hours that you're flying and traveling, and the the jet lag, and all of those things. You know, it's 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 been such a long road. You, I are you exhausted? You know, it it is it is really exhausting. Um uh to think about when when you're actually on tour and you're traveling mm -hmm. um there's just so much energy you're feeding off of everyone's energy you're feeding off okay. the energy of the crowd yes and um there's definitely um i don't know a higher sense of adrenaline uh yeah. when when you're on tour you just feel like you're always on um i only feel really exhausted uh when i actually come back home because then, okay. you know, yes, you kind of, you, your guard goes back down a little bit, and then you kind of just the adrenaline isn't there so much, and mm. and that's when it really hits me. I, you know, wow. um, I don't really feel all that hard while on tour because there's so much, I don't know, stimulus, right? Mm. There's so much going on that keeps it going, but um, it isn't until I get home where it just it just kind of all catches up with me. And then it's like for a week, it's like, I'm just, you know, completely fatigued. Yeah. Yeah. But then, uh, but that's all right. You know, seven to 10 days though, I start coming back around again and, uh, and it's all good. Amazing. Um, John, in my opinion, you are one of the greatest living bass players in the world. Um, I think you have single-handedly inspired hundreds and thousands you know maybe millions of aspiring musicians and bass players um and you know chatting with you today has, has really been a privilege for me considering um i'm such a fan of your music so thank you for coming on the heavy hook show and um just come back to england just just keep coming back whenever you want because i always I, even if there's no one else i will always be there um but genuinely thank you so much for hanging out today all right sounds good thank you very much thanks for having me